We're going to continue now with uh, Alan Greenspan, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve. Uh, I go back so long with covering this guy when I used to work a nightly business report, and he would do economic commentary. It was a firm called Townsend Greenspan in those days. Then he became a really big, big deal, as you know, and he's uh, joining us now. Um, you know, Dr. Greenspan, one thing you said that was interesting to me, and I wonder if you can get me in on Fed intrigue. You kind of looked at market swings and big down days, and what, that, that they, they don't punctuate or have the long term effect that people think and, and we we get sidetracked by it on a kind of paraphrasing and yet I think when the Federal Reserve makes whatever decisions it tends to make it's always looking at the markets and I have a sense more so now than ever before is that a good thing a bad thing what well first of all the, the Federal Reserve tries to look at what's causing the economy to move, to, uh, with causing the financial markets to change. And obviously that changes uh, from period to period. So that, for example, during the dot-com boom, uh, there was very significant evaluation of the impact of productivity, which was roaring ahead at that point. And the issue as to what do you do when the, uh, say, unemployment rate gets down to 4% or less, do you tighten up? Well, ordinarily you would, but we didn't at that point. And the reason was that the productivity gains were extraordinarily strong and made it n unnecessary to do that. So, each so in other words, they were not episode, inflationary at face value. The, the, the productivity was such that it wasn't a risk to inflation getting out of control. That's exactly right. And so that the Fed had to make decisions which historically we wouldn't have made, namely the, the, three and a half or four percent unemployment rate was inflationary hmm. well yes and no it depends on what's happening to the rest of the economy and similarly uh, when we came out of the October 19th 1987 crash which is the then and now still the sharpest single day drop in the that's Dow right. that's right uh, we uh, we didn't we had to feel our way out of that and we thought that uh, it was going to be a lot worse than it turned out to be, but uh, we calibrated it in such a manner uh, based on very little knowledge that turned out to be the right thing to do. Yeah, so the you Fed were flying by the seat of your pants, but you flew pretty well. You know, I, we were talking about this presidential race, and I know you're doing a few politics, and for good reason, it, it's a swampy kind of a debate, but, but it, it does it alarm you that both candidates, both leading candidates, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, are not fans of the trade deals that many argue brought economic boom to this country. Now, m many are, are not of that opinion, but Hillary Clinton is in the odd position of rejecting the very trade deals that triggered the large job gains she brags about during her husband's administration. Donald Trump pretty much saying the same for different reasons that these trade deals have given American workers the shaft. What do you think of that kind of talk uh, and the threat of an insular America? Well, uh, I'm obviously in favor of the trade bill. People don't realize when they think that you're going to shut off, for example, imports from China, that somehow that's going to create jobs in the United States. It doesn't, because then instead of getting goods out of China, we will get them out of the Philippines or something else, some other place. But before they come back to the United States, they're going to try every all other places around the world where labor costs are perceived to be cheaper. So the issue of foreign trade is something which has helped this country grow going all the way back to 1790. And the presumption that all of a sudden we're turning off on trade is a very narrow-minded, my, my impression. Would Alan Greenspan build a wall along the Mexican border? <laughs> I don't have the physical staff to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very good answer. I think they call that a non-answer. Um, but, you know, he, he, I was thinking of the migrants as well, Alan, and, and what's going on. A lot of nations are building walls, and some for very valid reasons. They're concerned, their safety, attacks in Paris, Brussels, what have you. So you can understand where it's coming from. But do you worry the, the 
the global message this is sending, that it's a bunch of, I think one economist likened to a lot of tents locked up in the same campground. Uh, look, we've been through generation after generation in which free trade has propelled our country a uh, hundred years after we were uh, sort of hanging on the eastern edges of the uh, Atlantic seaboard, uh, barely surviving. A hundred years later, we were the most productive economy in the world. Now, that took an extraordinary amount of effort, but fundamentally, it was based on free trade. And if you cut down on imports, for example, you have to ask yourself, whose purchase are you basically cutting down? If people, for example, can get much cheaper clothes from China, uh, you shut down trade and they will be paying much higher prices. I don't see to whose advantage this is. The presumption that it is a job killer does not square with the historical facts. Trade is a positive force for employment at all levels of the economy. Alan Greenspan, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Some historic moments there. I'll, I'll get back to you on the equipment you'll need for that wall, Alan, okay? I guess a shovel <laughs> and a lot of bricks, and all, but we'll get back to you. It's a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Alan Greenspan, the uh, former Federal Reserve Chairman.